Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to go on an adventure and answer a question of which stars will actually live the longest in the universe. We're going to visit two star systems with two stars that we think will live longer than any of the other stars you see on the screen right now. Welcome to What The Math. Now, when it comes to the current age of the universe, which is about 13.8 billion years, uh, there's quite a lot of stars that are still around. There's a lot of large giant stars, there's a lot of smaller stars. And uh, if you look at, at the night sky, you'll see that there's a lot of things to basically marvel at. But one thing that will change in the next few billion or even trillion years is that many of these stars will actually disappear completely. As a matter of fact, after about a trillion years, this is what you're going to see in the night skies. And as the time goes on, less and less stars will still exist. Today we're going to visit two star systems, one known as VB10 and one known as LHS2924. The first system is currently thought of as the record holder for being the least massive star possible for essentially having a nuclear reaction. In other words, this is the least massive, almost smallest possible star you can have to be classified as a star. This is a red dwarf and um, its current type um, is known as M8V. Uh, M8 stands for its spectrum and only M9 is m even more extreme. But let's actually take a look at this star first and let me briefly explain to you what this star um, is and why it's kind of important. Um, it has a, an official name of Van Beesbroek star, um, named after the person who discovered it. And the interesting thing about it is that even though it's only approximately 19 light years away from our own planet, if I were to zoom out just a little bit, you would stop seeing it. And that's basically because it's so dim. It's so difficult to see it in the night skies that even with a more powerful telescope on Earth, we usually have trouble finding it. It's a very, very dim star. As a matter of fact, if, if this star was um, in our own solar system where the sun is located, it would only have luminosity of the moon. It would be very, very, very hard to see. It does have a partner though, and the partner is approximately 450 astronomical units away. Uh, and this is also red dwarf, but a little bit um, more massive and also a little bit brighter than the um, VB10 star. Now, one thing that is kind of interesting about these two stars and specifically about uh, the smaller partner, VB10, is that currently these are very, very active flare stars. Basically, they are red dwarfs that even though they're kind of small and a lot less powerful than our own sun, once in a while, they become really, really, really bright. As a matter of fact, once in a while, this star becomes like 100,000 degrees hot, and then it goes back down to its usual temperature of about uh, 2,600 degrees. And this is in Kelvin, not in Celsius. Now, this is something that is kind of well known about red dwarfs, but it's also something that concerns us because if there are any planets here, it's very likely that those planets will be dead and stripped of atmosphere and water. But here is the thing. This star will live for not just 10 billion years, not just 100 billion years. It will live on for approximately 12 trillion years. That is a very, very, very long period um, of life. This means that even when all of the other stars have long perished and disappeared from the universe, this is going to be one of the last remaining survivors. The star will live far longer than any other object in our galaxy. As a matter of fact, our galaxy will be completely dark. It's going to be filled with black dwarfs, white dwarfs, uh, black holes, neutron stars, very, very dim objects that are going to be hard to see. But this will be one of the few objects that is still going to be bright. And that also means that for any future life, any future civilization, and any future aliens, this might be actually the last refuge. Even its partner is going to be dead, but this star will still be around. 
Now, we don't really know if there are any planets here, so for this reason, we can't really speculate if there's anything habitable around here. But there's another star that is even more extreme than VB10, and this is why I wanted to actually take you there as well. The star that we discovered in 1983 is even more extreme. And this is what that star looks like. It's very unusual in that, well, this is actually its brightness. This is how bright it is. I haven't dimmed anything in the game. And this is kind of what it would look like in real life. It's extremely dim, even lighter than the previous star, uh, less massive, and seems to have nuclear reaction on the inside, making it an actual star, but it's basically on the border of being a brown dwarf. A brown dwarf is a very, very massive planet that doesn't have nuclear reaction. But being a star of M9, this is basically the least dim star you can possibly have, this means that this particular brown dwarf is going to live even longer. It's possible that this star will live 15 or even 20 trillion years. It's going to live even longer than other red dwarfs, and while other red dwarfs will most likely become white dwarfs by then, some will even become black dwarfs, this will still be a star. And as you can see in this particular simulation, it also seems to have a few planets around it. Now, as you can probably imagine, all of these planets are going to be very, very cold. Even the closest one, which is right there, is at minus 156 degrees Celsius. And that's because even though it's receiving some light from the uh, parent star, this is just not nearly enough. And I actually wanted to see if I can place this object a little bit closer to the parent star, just to see how warm it would actually get. So let's maybe slow down the simulation a little bit and place this practically, I guess, as close as possible without the star shedding it apart due to tidal effects. In other words, I want to place it somewhere much, much closer than this. Luckily for us, it's very easy to do in Space Engine. We'll just have to click sh Shift F2 and go into the orbital parameters. I think they are going to be right here. And then change the semi-major axis just a little bit. All right. So this looks a little bit better, I guess. Now let's run the simulation and see how warm the planet gets. And look at that. It's currently at a very comfortable 13 degrees Celsius on average. That's actually kind of what the temperature on Earth is. Um, and it's also located just outside of the Roche limit area. So this planet would actually not fall apart. So if there is a planet similar to this in the region of space um, right here, or let me just zoom out just to show you where it's located. If, if there's a planet somewhat this far away, and that's actually a similar distance to moon uh, from Earth. In that particular case, this particular planet might actually receive just enough heat to be habitable. Now, we don't know if there are planets in this particular region around this particular star, but there are definitely more stars similar to LHS 2924 that may have planets in this region. There are obviously some problems with having a planet so close to the star. Uh, one of these problems would be still quite dramatic tidal effects. Although if this planet is tidally locked, it would not be a big deal. The other problem obviously is that right now, this would not be a habitable world. It's receiving way too much radiation when the star does flare up and it would actually strip this side of the planet from any life, also water and atmosphere. But in trillions of years, hopefully these planets are still around and hopefully, oh, there's actually something sparkly going on on the surface there. Let's go check it out. Hopefully, um, if these planets are still around and if the star actually becomes less energetic and um, less active, so if it's no longer a flare star, it's possible that this could be home for future aliens. These could be the only planets that are... are able of supporting life, the only planets that are capable of basically making it possible for life to survive in the universe. Now, all of this is still in very, very far future, but if we understand the evolution of stars and planets um, correctly, and if we're not wrong about this, then, well, this is still a very interesting world that we need to consider exploring because even if our own civilization doesn't survive, 
we might be able to leave some historical documents and some sort of a scientific knowledge for any civilization that might actually live here in the future, just so that they know what they're missing. As I mentioned in the video that I made about the galaxy in 1 trillion years, any civilization living at this period of time will not know stars, they will not know nebulae and supernova, they will not even know what other galaxies are. They might not even be aware that the galaxy is the way it is, or that the universe is expanding. So this right here could potentially be a kind of a library for us to leave to any aliens that might be around. Well, anyway, that's kind of all I wanted to show you in this video. And as you can see, I was able to create a kind of a, I guess you could call it habitable world in the system known as LHS 2924. This right here could potentially become the future of human species or some sort of future alien civilization that is living out its last days before the universe finally loses its last star. For now though, that's all I wanted to show you. You can check out the system in Space Engine yourself just by typing LHS2924. There are several planets here and they're all very, very beautiful. Anyway, come back tomorrow to learn something else. Subscribe if you still haven't and share this video with someone who enjoys learning through video games and simulations. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out and as always, bye bye.